ready. Morning, guys. Good to see you, Mr. Kenya. Morning, guys. It's Mrs. G. Mrs. G, I think we really have to concentrate on this lesson today. Okay, Mr. King, which is going to be hard to do since it's Friday. Yeah. Let's concentrate. Okay, we'll concentrate. Concentration of solutions, Mr. King. Yep, concentration. So, like, dilute, concentrated. Right, like we were talking the other day, kind of like saturated, saturated. yeah. Super saturated. How much solute do you put in your water? Okay. All right, so uh, solutions can be... Solids, liquids, and gas, and most of this is going to be liquid forms. Most of it's going to be liquid forms. Right. But uh, the solutes wind up getting dissolved evenly, right? Right, that's what okay. a homogeneous solution is. It's like we've said that like four or five times so far. Yep, you're right. drinking a lovely cup of tea, so yeah. am I. Homogeneous throughout. Homogeneous throughout, this is true. Uh, well, the same ratio throughout, and this ratio is what's known as a concentration. Correct. Um, and these ratios come in different ways to measure. Okay, so we can measure this con these concentrations different ways. Some people like to measure in parts per million. Yep. Uh, carrots is another way to measure solutions. Yeah. Notice that's, cap that's capital K, so we're talking about alloys like gold and silver, mm -hmm. and how, we, how we get jewelry. There's so. only one carrot women know, Mr. Kane. Um, uh, mm -hmm. 24? Yes. <laughs> Darn right. Uh, there's also another way. Now, the first two we're not really going to do much in chemistry. Uh, but uh, the si th this third one here uh, is percent by mass, mm -hmm. and we do that. Yep. Uh, and then there's also something called molarity. Uh huh. And molarity has to do with how many moles of solute you've got per liter of solvent. And right. the solvent's usually water. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of them. Molality, normality. We're going to focus on the last two. Percent right. by mass, which is real easy, and molarity, mm -hmm. which is also real easy. Okay, so mass percent. Of solutions. Now make sure you guys keep in mind the three different terms. Solute, solvent, solution. Remember that the solution is the sum of the solute and the solvent. And there it is there, right? Yeah. This is the, this is the way to calculate it. Here we are, we got the mass percent. So the mass percent of the solute Right. is going to be the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solution. And like you said, the solution is made up of two parts. Right. It's the solvent and the solute. So if they give you mass of the solvent, mass of the solute, you got to add them up before you get the mass of the solution. All right, so for example, we could have a problem like this. We're trying to make a solution that's being prepared by mixing one gram of ethanol with 100 grams of water calculate the mass percent of ethanol in the solution. Okay, so you have to identify the solute, which in this case is going to be the ethanol, Okay, because it's the smallest quantity. And that's the thing we're dissolving, so the solute goes on top, right? Correct, mass of the so solute. So 1.00 grams. And then the solution is going to be the sum of the solute and the solvent. In this case, they so gave you the solute as the ethanol and the solvent as the water. So we add them up. Okay, so 100 plus 1, that's, that's easy. So we're, gonna, we're basically doing 1 divided by 101, and we're going for three sig figs when we're doing this. Uh-huh. And it comes out to be? Oh, don't forget to multiply by 100. Yeah. I forgot that part. 0.990%. Hmm. So almost 1%. Um, yep. Not close enough that we can round, though, because so, we went in three sig figs. Right. So 0.990% of the solution is ethanol. That's not a lot, but... Okay, so 0.990% ethanol. Right. And the rest is water. So almost 99% water and 1%, almost 1% ethanol. So that was pretty easy, calculating mass percent. I don't think we need to do another one. No, that I, was very easy. That was Part the hard, over hold times 100. That was the hardest type that we just gave them. You have to actually remember to add the add, solvent yes. and the solute. Yep. So we can now calculate the molarity. harder thing, okay. which is molarity. And mo uh, by saying it's the harder thing isn't to say that it's hard. It's just that it happens to be a little bit more complicated. Yes. Okay, uh, this tends to be the most convenient way for chemists to talk about concentrations of solutions. Yep. At least for our purposes yes, in regular chem. Uh, and it describes the number of moles of solutes divided by the number of liters of solution. Okay, and again, watch the terminology. Again, it's moles of solute and liters of the entire solution. All right, so uh, the symbol for molarity is a capital M 
Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Which is also referred to as molar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can pronounce that as molarity or molar, yeah. right? Depending on the context. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the units are moles per liter. Which is exactly like the definition, basically. Right. So that means that the math is going to be moles of solute per divided by liters of solution. And that gives us molarity. And if we want to abbreviate it, it's capital M equals moles per liter. Moles per liter. Yep. I mean, it's all right, nicely compacted right there, Mr. Kane. You got your units staring your face. You got your mathematical computation staring you in the face. And basically, your definition staring you in the face. The definition of molarity is the moles of solute per liter of solution. You calculate it, moles of solute divided by liters of solution. You can't miss. It's all right there. So we got some pretty simple uh, discussion points here. What's the molarity of solution made from one mole? And uh, apparently, this is going to be one liter of solution based on that flask, right? Yep. A thousand milliliters is one liter? Yep. Okay. So if I take one mole of solutes and I put it in a thousand mils of solution, what do I get? One molar solution. Right. So I get one mole per one liter. So that means I get a one molar solution. Yep. Right? Okay. And that's what it looks like, a one molar solution. Now, Mr. Kane, I noticed a kind of redundancy here for your... Oh, look at that poor mole. You shoved him in the liter. Anyway, I noticed you used for units a capital M. Can mm -hmm. we also use moles per liter? Ah, yeah. Um, there's two ways to write this. You could write it moles per liter also as a final answer. So here's one possibility for a final answer, and here's another possibility for a final answer. Right. The capital M or moles per liter. Right. It's the same thing. And you just have to make sure that if you're putting this into, I don't know, say a quiz on Moodle, yeah. uh, you might want to make sure that you do lowercase m, o, l, divided by capital L, yeah. because it's not going to recognize Right, it is a capital L. Units. That's the symbol for liters. We got a 2,000 milliliter Pyrex beaker uh -huh. here, and there's two, two moles, moles in it. I would like the mole wrapped in dollars. Okay, go ahead. The, the other the other mole um, uh, is wearing a tie, has a goatee, and glasses. Uh, that would be you, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, that's what I was told. Okay. So at any rate, we got two moles of solutes in 2,000 milliliters of solution. Which is two liters. So, so two moles divided by two liters. So two divided by two is... One. So we got a one molar solution. It's the same concentration as that last solution. Now, a couple of things, Mr. Kane. I noticed that if they give you the volume of solution in milliliters, we have to do dimensional analysis, metric conversion, mm -hmm. because the definition is moles of solute per liter yeah, of solution. It's always liters, so you got to convert okay. to liters. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so here's an example. What's the molarity of potassium chloride solution that has a volume of? 400 mils and contains 85 grams of potassium chloride. Whoa, 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 grams? All those other examples were all moles. Where did the grams come from, well, Mr. Kane? See, this is why I said this version was a little bit harder. Ah, so... I don't have a balance in the back of my room that tells me moles of a salt. So here what we've got to do is we've got to take this 85 grams of potassium chloride and we've got to use first semester chemistry. we got to convert from grams to moles. Oh, yeah, I've, when we did this first semester. Uh huh. And I can hear you punching buttons on your calculator. You're uh, calculating the molar mass of potassium chloride, I'm figuring. 74.55 grams, Mr. Kane. All right. For so, potassium chloride, for the molar mass of potassium chloride. Right. So, how many moles do I have? You have 1.14 moles. All right. So, I got 1.14 moles of, of potassium, potassium chloride. chloride. So the molarity is going to be calculated by taking the 1.14 moles and dividing it by the solution amount, which is 400 milliliters. So I'm going to record that here as 0 0.400 liters. 2.85 moles per liter. OK, so 2.85 moles per liter. So that literally means there's approximately 3 moles for every liter of solution. Right, there's about almost three moles for yep. every liter. Mm -hmm. Can't get easier than that. So we've got two solutions that are one liter apiece. Uh, solution A looks to be kind of weakly concentrated, right? Yeah, there's only three balls in there, which represents three moles. So that's three right. moles per liter. So that's a three molar solution. Right, if one, if one ball represents a mole, mm -hmm. yeah, three yeah. molar solution. 
What about solution B? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's a five molar solution. Solution. So you got a three molar on the left and a five molar on the right, correct? Right. So okay. the more concentrated solution is? The one on the right, okay. five molar. All right. Very good. Real life application here. Yeah. Uh, this is from an IV bag from a hospital. You can see that they express things two ways. On the top, they talk about grams yep. of solution. So you could get a percent if you wanted. And on the bottom, they talk about moles per liter, except for they're talking about millimoles. Yeah. millimoles. Mm -hmm. I used to make these bags when I worked in the pharmaceutical business. Oh, yeah? Yeah, lots of quality control goes into these bags. So when it says 181.6 millimoles per liter. Oh, you have it's 181.6 millimoles per liter, let me tell you. So that's a precision. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of need for precision in this because yeah. if you put too much or too little, you're going to screw up all your red blood cells. Yeah, you could screw up, and that could uh, that could hurt somebody. Yep, mess up your muscles and your liver and your kidneys, and just completely mess you up big time. I think we're going to be making up solutions in class, right? Yes. Okay. We're going to be making up what's called our stock solution, and then we're eventually going to be diluting that. Okay. All right. So if we're going to make up a stock solution, we've got to know how to do it. Correct. Uh, the pictures here show you how to do it. What you need is you need a piece of expensive equipment called the volumetric flask to start out with. Which are very precise. Right. Notice that uh, the volumetric flask has a line etched in the neck here that tells you how much, so how much liquid to add to get a certain volume. Yeah. Um, and it depends on how big your volumetric flask is. Some of them come in 250s, some of them come in thousands, some of them come in hundreds. I've seen them as small as 25 mils. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, I got a bunch of those. Depends on what, how much you want to make. And most of the time our liquid, guess what it's going to be? Distilled water. Right. Water is our most favorite solvent. Right. But the, uh, the basic idea is this. You want exactly a certain volume because um, uh, we want certain volumes. You don't do it in beakers or graduated cylinders. It's a volumetric flask because the volumetric flasks are so precise. So the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out how much solute you need. So if you want a one molar solution, you backtrack the math and you take one mole and you turn it into grams. Yeah, can't you just leave it as moles, Mr. Kane? Well, if you could leave it as moles, if you could find me a balance that measures in moles, moles yeah. right? So if I wanted a one molar solution, I would have to know what one mole uh, is equal to in grams. Yeah. Okay. I would measure that out, and I would put that into my volumetric flask. Uh, after that, I'd probably make sure that I washed some water in and start, stoppered it up and made sure that that dissolved pretty well. Yep. The reason why you do that now before you fill it all the way up is because it's very difficult to swirl the water yeah. when there's water in the neck when up here. Full. So you swirl it while it's still half to three quarters full and uh, things get dissolved pretty well. And then once things get dissolved, then you can open it up again. You can add water until it hits the line. And you want to do that very carefully because you don't want to put too much. If you put too much, you got to start over. You got to start all over. Done that a lot of times. That's step one. And the bottom of the meniscus has to touch the line. So, uh, like, just like everything else, we right. reach from the bottom of the meniscus. It's the bottom of the meniscus you're shooting okay. for. All right. But you have to do some leg work before you start this, right? You have to figure out how much water, what volumetric flask to use. You got to do a little calculations because you got to figure out how many moles. You got to figure out what mass that is. Yeah. Right. So you got to do a little leg work before you go grabbing a volumetric flask.